guys, John here. Um, I'm going to be attempting my first video blog. I had a few friends that uh, requested me to do a video blog and kind of a good documentary type thing uh, for my cylinder head uh, upgrade uh, repair. Um, I've, I had a friend that recently dropped a valve on his 2010 uh, 23,000 mile stock internal ZR1. Uh, damaged the cylinder head, damaged the intake valve, cracked the block. Uh, he's he's roughly about twenty thousand dollars into it now, just for the uh, correction and upgraded uh, parts components. Uh, I don't want that to happen to me. I do track my car occasionally at, at Coda. Uh, my car is a twenty thirteen Z07 option Z06, uh, roughly about thirteen thousand plus miles. I don't drive my car a lot. Uh, I do track it though. I'm pretty hard on it. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is replacing the exhaust valves, uh, installing bronze guides. I'm upgrading the valves to the titanium valve, replacing the uh, uh, sodium filled hollow stem valves. Uh, there's actually a lawsuit against GM uh, for this particular issue. Um, K Tech and GM had been talking uh, previously to try to correct this issue and what they found was the valve guides are not machined uh, concentric to the valve seats and over time it, it causes some valve issues you drop a valve and you need a motor uh, I don't want to I don't want that to happen to me I'm gonna prevent that before it even gets an issue uh, and what I'm doing today is I'm gonna pull the heads and uh, Kind of guide you through the uh, the repair procedure, take some measurements uh, before and after the upgrade. The guys at uh, Texas Speed here in Georgetown, uh, down the street from us, uh, are going to be doing uh, some more uh, porting work to the factory CNC porting. They they actually uh, open up the chamber, uh, the runners, the guides. Uh, even more than factory, so it'll it'll flow more. Uh, install new uh, bronze guides, uh, heavy duty springs, titanium retainers. Uh, from the factory, the LS7 will redline at roughly 7,000 RPM. Uh, with all the lighter valve frame improvements that I'm doing, I should easily hit 8,000 if I need to. If I, in case I miss a a, a shift and uh, it won't damage my motor. It'll it'll be capable of revving at that higher RPM. So uh, enjoy the video. So here's the car that we're going to be doing the exhaust valve upgrade. It's a 2013 Z07 optioned Z06 factory carbon fiber splitter, side skirts, rotors, top just like the ZR1. Only these this model was with the black. Uh, there's the factory little carbon fiber emblem. Uh, so we will get started in just a few minutes. Enjoy the video. I thought this was pretty cool. This is the engine builder. I'm not sure why it's not focusing. There it is. He actually signed the valley cover as well. That's pretty cool.
Okay, so I got the head pulled off, the passenger side anyway. As you can see, it's pretty clean. Don't see anything unusual. Uh, I'm gonna get this one in the hot parts washer, clean it up. While I'm cleaning this one up, I'm gonna pull the other side off. Uh, once they're cleaned up really well, I'm going to get a dial indicator and see what kind of run out we got on those valves. So I got the driver's side cylinder head off. Everything looks good. Don't see anything out of the ordinary. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the hot parts washer, clean it up, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, got the cylinder head out of the parts washer. Cleaned it up really good. Looks pretty damn clean. So clean that you can actually read the factory GMPP Dell West titanium intake valve and part number so now I'm going to disassemble the head itself hook up a dial indicator and see what kind of uh, side to side uh, play we got I got a dial indicator set up I've noticed that the intake valves are actually have seem to have a little bit more play than the exhaust valves. Roughly about ten thousandths. You can see the valve moving. It's kind of hard to tell, but. Okay, so I have the number eight cylinder exhaust valve set up with the dial indicator and it looks like it's got just as much play it's right at nine nine maybe ten thousandths just uh, I couldn't really tell before when I had it off just eyeballing it because maybe it's a smaller valve and it didn't seem to have a lot of movement but it it actually does have a lot of movement as well so this is what I'm going to be correcting with the new guides and the remachining re of everything with the guys at Texas Speed four cylinder intake valve try to get a see the play there quite a bit. Okay, so here's my replacement valves. They're from K-Tech. They're titanium and they're made in the USA. 
So here's the titanium valve, 67 grams. Here's the hollow stem valve, 75, 74 grams. Uh, so basically, let's see the difference here. See what kind of weight difference is going to be. So the uh, hollow stem is about seven grams heavier. Uh, basically, the lighter valve train is going to allow the engine to rev to a higher RPM without getting valve float and uh, losing power at that higher RPM. Okay, so now that we've verified that there is an issue with the side-to-side -side, uh, movement of the valves, uh, went ahead and pulled them all out, cleaned them. Uh, there's the factory CNC porting of the intake runner. I'm going to reassemble it and uh, take it down to Texas Speed. So we're at Texas Speed. This is their state-of-the-art facility. Lots of cool stuff in here. LT1 stand grinder. Uh, you know, it's our brand new machine. We've had it for probably about six or seven months now. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just, we get it to grind cans and it's all CNC driven. It's everything on it is very fast. Um, I think when we really want to get going, it'll grind about 80, 80, 80, 80 or 90 cans in a day. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's pretty good. Cool. Uh, that's just the older can grinding machine. That's it's badass. Basically, uh, about a 15 year old version of this one. Okay. Um, you know, that one was in a Chrysler machine plant. The guy who set it up there is actually the one that set this one up and this one up. Oh, cool. wow. That's cool. That's sweet. These are computerized balancers. It's our block machine over here. We got line hose and cylinder hose over that way. It's a uh, G-Star head machine. Uh, and it'll actually allow us to, uh, you know, like before all of our aftermarket castings were getting finished somewhere else, you know, they were poured at a foundry and then sent to the machine shop where they would, you know, drill the cylinder, like uh, the push rod holes and like the head bolt holes and all that. Uh, this machine is going to allow us to do all of that here. Uh, you know, basically you get poured in the foundry and then sent here and then we'll do all the finished work and then we'll just straight to port machine on the other side. Sweet. Of our, it's our newest CNC mill. Um, that's basically just a new version of that machine right back there. Um, well, that was our first CNC mill that we ever bought. I mean, they basically bought this one. We've probably had this one for about three years now. Um, wow. It's just a newer, you know, just a newer version of that one. So this is, this is what's going to do the heads? Uh, it's part of it, yeah. Yeah, they'll stick the heads on here and they'll uh, set up valve jobs. Uh, they'll deck heads and they'll set up valve jobs on here. Uh, make it a little bit easier on our actual valve job machines. So they have a little bit less work. All these straight down here are just straight up, you know, five axis CNC machines for the cylinder head porting. Oh, wow. And there's three of these that do the porting? Well, actually, yeah, there's three of these same ones, the HS1s, and then we have the ES5s down there that also do porting. So we've got five, five porting machines that run as long as there's no lightning going on overhead, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sweet. These are PRC heads? Yeah, these are going to be PRC aftermarket cast casting. Uh, those are LS3 heads. The LS3? Two, yeah, the 216s the LS3 heads. Oh, wow. That's actually what Noel has. Okay, cool. So there's one in action here. Yeah, that one's good. That one will give you a better view. This one over here. Got to clear the window. This one? This one? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's still pretty cool. The machines, well, those are from France. Um, you know, those ones just really good. 
good machine. They usually run pretty well. Is oh, is there one cruising right now? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Cool. Is there another window over here? Oh, sweet. L99 from say like a 2010 Camaro. Yeah. And we're just starting to test our BBT cams again, retesting from before, basically. Uh, making sure that I guess this will be like his first initial run to make sure the numbers are the same from where we were before. Uh, and then we'll just kind of keep going from there. Sweet. This is the big warehouse. Yeah. yeah this is the warehouse. You see cams and blocks. Wow. They got a, a hexagon machine here. That thing. What does that thing do? It's, it's a measuring machine, digitizing a measuring machine. Um, you know, it's got, we can go in here. It's got a little, this, uh, this arm right here. Uh, you know, it, it comes down, it's all machine. You know, motorized, controlled by that little hand thing there. And it basically just allows us to measure. You know, we, we can measure all kinds of stuff. This is part of the process of we getting those cylinder heads all in house as far as that goes. Yeah. Because, you know, the guy that actually does that part of it, you know, as far as like finishing the, the bolt holes and the push rod holes and all that, won't give us that info. You know, because we're, in essence, we're cutting it out. You know, yeah. so he won't give us those plans. So we need this machine to take our cylinder heads back there and measure that stuff. So, so they're all accurate. Info. Yeah. So everything's where it needs so to it's be. It's accurate. We have that info and then we can cut it on that machine back there. 